coming to the structure, this is an end channel enhancement type MOSFET. So in previous slides, we saw there are two types of MOSFET, depletion type and enhancement type. In depletion type, you already have a channel and in enhancement type, the channel is induced. Okay, it is generated. So coming back to the structure, a slab of P-type semiconductor is used as a substrate. And we have end doped regions over here. Okay, so these are heavily doped and this is lightly doped as compared to the end doped regions. So there are four terminals, source, gate, drain and substrate. The drain and source are connected to this end doped regions through this metallic contacts. The gate terminal is isolated from P-type substrate uh, by an insulating layer of oxide layer and we have used silicon dioxide. Okay, so in actual MOSFET you can see only three terminals. Okay, this is because the substrate and source are connected internally to the ground. Okay, like this. So this is an end channel enhancement MOSFET. The source and the substrate terminal is connected to the ground. As you can see here, there is a region which is formed between N and P doped region. It is called as depletion region. It is a region where there are no free charge carriers. Now let's start with the first part of working where the gate voltage is zero. Okay, so we have not applied any voltage at the gate terminal. We have applied a positive voltage between the source and the drain terminal. And there is no way that the drain current could flow from source to drain. So this positive potential at the gate terminal will repel the holes present in the p-type substrate so this results in the creation of depletion region near the oxide layer but the minority carriers that is the electrons in the p-type substrate will be attracted towards the positive gate terminal and gather near the surface of sio2 due to the field effect offered by the gate terminal as we increase the positive gate voltage the number of electrons gathering near the sio2 layer will increase the electron concentration near the SiO2 layer increases to such an extent that it creates an induced end channel which connects the two end doped regions. The drain current then starts flowing through this induced channel from source to drain. The value of gate voltage at which this conduction begins is called as threshold voltage and it is denoted by VDH. So as we increase the voltage between the source and the drain, this will cause charge movement between the source and the drain. But it will also change the shape of the channel. Now the channel begins to deplete towards the drain end. This is because the drain is at positive potential. The negative charges from the channel closest to the drain are being pulled to the drain. So as we increase the voltage VDS, two things would happen. One is this end doped region is reverse biased. Okay, so the depletion region would increase and the second is a point will be reached when the channel is completely pinched off over here. So once pinch off occurs, the gate loses control over the flow of electrons between the source and the drain. So now the flow of electrons saturates or reaches its maximum value. The value of VDS at this point is called as saturation value of VDS. So we have two graphs. The right one is the graph between the gate voltage and drain current. So once the gate voltage is greater than the threshold voltage, the current will increase exponentially with respect to gate voltage. The left graph is called the drain characteristic because it is a graph of drain to source voltage versus drain current. So as we increase the drain voltage, the current initially increases exponentially and eventually saturates. So as you increase the gate voltage, the drain current increases furthermore and again saturates. Let's use an analogy to understand the function of three terminals of MOSFET. Let's compare our MOSFET to a valve of plumbing system. Drain is the pin that current drain into. Source is the pin that current flow out of. And gate is the pin that will turn the transistor on and off, kind of like how a water gate, gate valve will control the flow of water. Now connect up the transistor like this. The source is connected to your circuit ground. 
connect the negative side of your load to the drain of your transistor connect the positive side of your load to the positive terminal of your external power supply now whether the transistor is off or on will depend on whether the gate is at 0 volts or 5 volts here is the equivalent circuit when the gate is at 0 volt the transistor stays off so no current can flow so the headlight stays off here is the equivalent circuit when the gate is at 5 volt the transistor turns on and starts acting like a very low resistance current path so current can flow current will flow from the power supply through to your load into the drain of the transistor and then out from the source of your transistor into the ground so when the transistor is on your gadget will turn on too now let's talk a little more about the signaling voltages that are going to the gate there are lot of different ways to do it and that's why transistors are so much fun here's an example with the computer's parallel port pins when the parallel port outputs a 1 which would be 5 volts the transistor turns on and here's another example with a 6 volt solar cell when the light shines on solar cell the gate receives at least 5 volts so the transistor turns on and there are hundreds of other ways you could switch the transistor on so basically you can control anything with anything now i would like to clarify something for safety's sake over here on the gate side you want to keep the signaling voltages less than 15 volts 0 to 5 volt is fine 0 to 12 volt is fine but if you try to signal things with 0 to 30 volt you will blow something up however on the drain side of things you have lot more freedom in the voltages you can use the only limitation is what the transistor can handle this n mosfet is rated for up to 60 volt so it can switch 12 volt loads 50 volt loads whatever i want all up to the 60 volt dc so i could switch leds on and off i could switch a string of low voltage christmas lights on or off if you add a diode over here you can switch a motor on and off or switch a solenoid on and off or switch a relay on and off and once you have relay being switched you can switch light bulbs on and off you can switch toaster ovens on and off or you can switch your refrigerator on and off basically if you can get a system that puts out 0 to 5 volt signal you can attach a transistor to it and you will be able to switch any gadget on and off <laughs>